31-year-old Matthew Ryan Stewart was a devoted family man who was born and raised in Mooresville, North Carolina. He proudly graduated from Mooresville High School and Mitchell Community College. As an adult, Matt dedicated himself to a career in nursing. His co-workers remember his bright spirit, diligent work ethic, and playful nature. He was an active member of River Life Fellowship Church and volunteered his time with their youth ministries. On June 9, 2009, approximately 40 minutes after midnight, an unknown intruder broke into the Stewart family residence and ended Matt's life. To this day, his murder still remains unsolved. I'm your host, Michael, and this is Strange and Unexplained. During the early 2000s, Matt met a woman at his church, Angela Hare, affectionately known as Angel. She was a single mother at the time, having recently welcomed a newborn daughter. In just a few months, they found themselves engaged, and Matt embraced fatherhood by officially adopting Angel's daughter. Their love story continued to flourish as they welcomed two more precious additions to their family, another daughter, and also a son. In the bustling world of healthcare, Matt and Angel both had their own unique experiences in the nursing field. Matt worked at a regional medical center while Angel worked at a hospital down the road in Charlotte, North Carolina. They lived in the Gabriel Estates subdivision in northern Mooresville, which was a relatively normal housing community in the more blue-collar section of town. Now, as the clock crept past midnight in the early morning hours of June 9th, 2009, everything in the Gabriel Estates subdivision was quiet. While the exact series of events still remains unclear, we do have an approximate timeline. Now, Matt and Angel's oldest daughter, Hannah, was at a friend's house for a sleepover, but the remaining two children were inside the home, asleep in their beds. Well, until the baby woke up. Just hours before their fate was sealed, Matt got out of bed, summoned by the cries of their one-year-old. Matt took the baby out of his crib and brought him into the master bedroom. Angel recalled him saying, quote, he just needed his mommy, end quote, before crawling back into bed with her and the baby. Angel says the three fell asleep again, but she was awoken hours later by an unknown sound. As her eyes adjusted to the darkness of the bedroom, she noticed the shadowy figure of a man standing in their bedroom door. Without warning or any sound at all, the man raised his arm and started firing into the couple's bed. Matt was hit right away. But Angel says that Matt heroically jumped up and went after the man, and the two started to struggle, which gave her time to grab the baby and run. Angel had been hit by a bullet, but she ignored the pain and ran to the neighbor's house. Covered in blood and panicking, the neighbor recalls her arrival, saying, quote, She rang the doorbell, and then I came to the door, and she looked at me and said she'd been shot. Angel called 911 immediately, with her call being logged in at 12.49 a.m. Two officers arrived on scene just four minutes later. However, no one entered the house until 2.30 a.m. Police claimed this was because they feared a potential hostage situation, was unfolding inside. So SWAT was called in. They entered the house around 2.30 and within moments found the body of Matt Stewart on the floor in the upstairs bathroom. Matt and Angel's three-year-old, who had been asleep in the next room, was found still sleeping and unharmed. Matt's autopsy would reveal that his death had been even more violent than originally expected, with him having been shot and stabbed several times in a gross act of overkill. There were defensive marks on his hands and arms, proving that he put up quite a fight against his attacker, allowing his family to escape alive. As it turns out, not one, but two firearms were involved in Matt's murder. During the autopsy, forensic experts found both 38 caliber and 40 caliber bullets. This revelation led many to conclude that not just one, but two gunmen were involved. But the authorities have given no information supporting the two gunmen theory. Now, adding to the already complicated circumstances, there was no evidence of a break-in at the house, though the back door seemed to be unlocked, which was very unusual since the Stewarts were always diligent about locking their home before retiring for the night. Also, none of the Stewarts' neighbors recalled seeing or hearing anything out of the ordinary that night, at least not until the police officers began to arrive. Now, even though Matt endured multiple gunshot wounds from powerful handguns, none of his neighbors were alerted to any sounds whatsoever, even though they were just feet away. One neighbor in particular, just a short distance away, claimed to be awake during the alleged shooting with an open window nearby, yet they claimed they didn't hear anything out of the ordinary. Furthermore, there was no evidence indicating theft. No valuable items were reported as missing following the homicide. Additionally, there was a remarkable lack of reports pertaining to break-ins within the neighborhood, both prior to and subsequent to the murder. 
In interviews with detectives, Angel was unable to give any kind of description of this killer, other than the detail that he was a tall male. In the following weeks, the Mooresville police urged local residents not to be excessively worried about the crime, as they believed there was no immediate threat to anyone else in the area. Consequently, a prevailing hypothesis emerged suggesting that the killer had a personal connection to Matt and his loved ones. However, this theory would swiftly fade into the background with the emergence of the first and sole suspect identified in the case. Starting in the last week of June 2009, Gaffney, South Carolina, a small town located approximately 70 miles southwest of Mooresville, fell prey to a vicious spree killer. But a little over a week after the spree began, a burglary in progress was reported in Dallas, North Carolina, which is roughly halfway between the two cities. Patrick Tracy Burris, a recently paroled inmate who had violated the terms of his probation, was being sought after for the killings. Officers attempted to apprehend Burris once they confirmed his identity, but a brief struggle ensued and Burris opened fire on the officers, hitting and injuring one and was subsequently shot and killed. Although ballistics provided a clear connection between Burris and the Gaffney killings, there was no such evidence linking him to Matt Stewart's murder. When Burris died, the only weapon found in his possession was a 25 caliber pistol, where Matt was shot with a 38 and a 40. Now, despite newspapers reporting that Burris had sold two firearms before his death, there is no evidence or confirmation of this in the years since, and no piece of physical or circumstantial evidence linking him to the murder of Matt. The unveiling of a suspect sketch in January of 2010 marked a significant turning point in the investigation, coming almost six months after the tragic event. Releasing this police sketch provided authorities with the opportunity to share crucial information about the killer. According to the sketch, the perpetrator was characterized as a tall and robust individual, weighing around 250 pounds with fairly typical facial attributes, whatever that means. In the sketch, the suspect appeared bald, possessing a prominent forehead, narrow eyes, space noticeably apart, a broad, flattened nose, and a square jaw adorned with stubble. The release of the sketch in the case of Matt's shooting raises some doubts and uncertainties, to say the least. While it is believed that Matt's wife, Angel, provided the description, the source of this information remains unknown. Witness recollections, especially after experiencing trauma, can be unreliable, which adds to the skepticism around the sketch. The fact that it took a considerable amount of time for the police to release such a vague sketch raises even further questions about its reliability. Former Mooresville Police Chief Carl Robbins emphasized that the sketch was just one piece of the puzzle and should be seen as an artist's rendering of the suspect, nothing more. Overall, the release of the sketch leaves room for interpretation and raises doubts about its credibility as crucial evidence in the case. So that brings us to June 9th, 2018, which marked the nine-year anniversary of the unsolved murder. And it also marked the release of a podcast series called Unforgotten, The Unsolved Murder of Matt Stewart. In each episode, listeners are taken on a journey into the heart of this mysterious case. Through exclusive interviews with those closest to Matt, his friends, family, and neighbors, the podcast sheds light on the shocking reality surrounding his untimely demise. During the production of the podcast, the host received a warning from Matt's relatives that the murderer might still be at large and possibly monitoring the show. Concerned for their safety, these family members implored the host to remove the podcast, believing that its content posed a threat to them. In fact, someone actually threatened legal action against Freddie, the host of the podcast, saying they felt that it put them in danger, but wouldn't state exactly how. The unresolved murder of Matt Stewart serves as a haunting reminder of the fragility and complexities of human life. Despite extensive efforts by law enforcement and the tireless pursuit of justice, the truth behind the crime remains shrouded in mystery. If anyone listening has specific information about the murder of Matt Stewart, you are encouraged to reach out to the Mooresville Police Department at 704-664-3311. Or if you'd rather remain anonymous, you can call Crime Stoppers at 704-658-9056. The $11,000 reward for information should still stand and can be claimed by anyone that gives information leading to an arrest. Again, I'm your host, Michael, and this has been Strange and Unexplained. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when new videos pop up every single week. Look for a new Strange and Unexplained case next Monday. 
Until then, be strange. Just don't be strangers. See ya.